Robert Bergen, number 72. Moderator, it's my privilege as chair of the Church of Scotland Investors Trust to report to the General Assembly and to present our annual report and financial statements for the year ended 31st December. In this short report, I would like to remind the Assembly what COSIT is, how it operates, and what has happened in the last year. We were established by Act of Parliament 30 years ago in 1994 to provide Church of Scotland congregations and organisations with a cost-effective and uncomplicated way in which they can invest money which they don't need now with the aim that their investment will benefit from either or both capital appreciation and the payment of regular income in order to allow them to carry out their future mission. So in a nutshell, that is what we try to do. We offer three funds. The Growth Fund aims to provide good long-term total returns, but is subject to short-term volatility in prices. The Income Fund aims to provide a reliable level of income, but the unit prices of the Income Fund will fluctuate as long-term yields vary. And the third fund, the Deposit Fund, provides a high level of capital protection, but pays interest linked to short-term rates in the money markets. We're not permitted to provide investors with advice on which of our funds suits them best, but we do publish general guidance on the website to help church treasurers and other investors to understand how they should link the purpose for which their funds are held against the characteristics of the three funds offered. All of our funds are managed by external investment managers, and they make the decisions about buying and selling investments, working within guidelines that we provide them, and respecting our ethical requirements, which include the exclusions which are such as armaments and tobacco. After a period of challenging times in investment markets, I'm pleased to report that 2023 was a more favorable year for each of our funds. Almost all investment markets delivered positive returns in sterling terms, and the growth and income funds both saw increases in their unit prices. The themes which dominated markets last year and which continue to have an impact in the first part of 2024 included price inflation, interest rates, and the question about recession or no recession. Unlike last year, when I stood here uh, reeling off a whole number of negative minus figures, I'm delighted that I can stand here today and give you figures which are all positive. The Growth Fund delivered a total return after expenses last year of 10.6%. Although this was behind the benchmark against which we measure the fund, and that was 13.2%, 10.6% was 3.3% ahead of the average performance of a large number of other charities with similar objectives to ours. The Income Fund delivered a net return of 9.44%, which was once again ahead of its benchmark return of 8.6%. Our, our total funds increased in value from 474.5 million at the beginning of last year to five, almost 509 million at the end of December. The first quarter of 2024 has seen further improvement in capital values, especially in the growth fund, partly due to easing inflation and interest rate projections. When we met our investment managers only last week, we were told that while they are pleased with the way that markets have performed this year to date, they continue to be cautious, as there are still a number of uncertainties about the future, such as the timing of interest rate cuts, how quickly price inflation falls, and ongoing geopolitical risks in various parts of the world, 
some of which have already been referred to during this General Assembly. By the end of March, the total value of our funds had risen to almost £532 million. So £474.5 million at the beginning of 2023 and now £532 million. Some more positive figures. After the increases in income which we distributed in 2022, we were again able to increase the level of income distributed for 2023. Growth fund investors received 13.5p per unit for the year, which was 12.5% more than they had received the year before. Interest investors in the income fund saw their distributions increase to 55p per unit, which was 15.8% more than we had been able to distribute the previous year. Deposit fund investors continued to see the benefits of higher interest rates and the average rate of interest that we paid from that fund, which had been 1.16% in 2022, rose to 4.26% in 2023. And the most recent distribution from the deposit fund for the quarter to 31st March was based on an annual rate of interest of 5.23%. In 2024, while it's difficult to predict with any certainty, we expect that the income, and the, growth, the income from the growth and income funds might be similar to that in 2023, and that if anticipated reductions in interest rates materialize in the coming months, there will be a gradual reduction in the rate of interest which the deposit fund is able to pay. Although the COSIT trustees review the performance of their external investment managers at each of our quarterly meetings, it's been a number of years since we undertook a comprehensive review of the managers. And as I reported last year, we started by conducting a review of the investment consultants who provide us with strategic advice. As a result of that review, we appointed Barnett Waddingham in September 2023. And after working with them on a review of our overall investment strategy, we asked them to begin a process of reviewing the managers of each of the three funds, commencing with the growth fund. Such reviews take time, and I am grateful to my fellow trustees for the additional time which has been spent on this exercise in recent months. As part of the review, we have decided to set a new investment target for this fund, which we will express in terms of percentage returns in excess of increases in the Consumer Prices Index. And we hope that this will help our investors to understand better what they might receive if they invest in the growth fund. Secondly, as the fund had grown significantly since the existing managers were appointed, we've also decided to split it by allocating a portion of the assets to an additional manager. This selection process continues and we will report details to our investors when the review has been completed. Reviews of the managers of the deposit and income funds will follow. Three of the COSIT trustees, including myself, have participated as members of the Ethical Oversight Committee, which was established at last year's General Assembly. I will leave the chair of that, Val Brown, to report on the work which the committee has undertaken during the past year. But I can confirm that we are pleased with the progress which has been made to date. As part of the regular reporting to us, the investment managers give us updates on environmental, social and governance issues, including information about the way in which they've been engaging with particular companies and how they've voted at company general meetings. We are now discussing these reports within the Ethical Oversight Committee. However, the complexity of these issues cannot be underestimated, and we look forward to continuing the dialogue which has already started in the Ethical Oversight Committee. And we also look forward to continue participating as an active member of the Church Investors Group 
where we hear about the approaches taken by other Christian denominations and are provided with valuable information on key issues. Communication is important, as we've already heard in the Assembly, and during the year we continue to issue general bulletins to update our investors on performance and to provide an income of likely income distributions, an indication, excuse me, of likely income distributions. We also organised another well-attended webinar for our investors in September and plan to do so again later in the year. In accordance with the terms of our constitution, three of our trustees are due to retire by rotation at the end of May. And I'm pleased to report that all three are willing to serve a further term of three years, and that is in our deliverance. In addition, we are recommending the appointment for an initial three-year term of a new trustee, Mr. Scott Anderson, who responded to advertisements we, which we placed seeking new trustees. And I can tell the Assembly, with the new trustee's permission, that he falls into the under age 40 bracket. <laughs> Following 15 years of service, our previous chair, Mr. Brian Duffin, has indicated his wish to retire. Brian has been an outstanding trustee and led the trust during a particularly busy and challenging time. He's also represented COSIT on the Church Investors Group. We're most grateful to Brian for his faithful service to COSIT and wish him well in all his other endeavours. I want to record our thanks to Anne McIntosh, who retired at the end of March as General Treasurer for all her help during many years, and to her successor, uh, Jenny Simpson, who's joined me at the table today, who has already, in quite a short period of time, shown good support to COSIT. We appreciate the work of our executive officer, June Lee, who's also at the table, and the other staff of Investors Trust, who ensure the smooth day-to-day -day operations of the Trust and are the frontline point of contact for both our investors and our investment managers. Finally, I acknowledge with gratitude the time and effort so freely given by all of our trustees. Moderator, I submit the report and accounts of the Investors Trust and will lay them on the clerk's table. And I'm delighted to present my report and as I'm a commissioner this year, to move the deliverance. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Right, thank you, convener. No questions, so we can move to section one. Receive the report. Section two. Section three. Section four. And the deliverance as a whole. Right. Thank you very much, and thank you for your amazing amount of work you do. I don't understand half of it, but I, <laughs> I'm amazed at what you do. Thank you. I can't. <laughs>